We've had an introduction to bones. Now we'll take a look at a very cool feature called Smart Bones. It's a wonderful addition to Anime Studio Pro 9 and allows you to save so much time when you're animating organics or even inorganics that you want to have more believable types of deformations when the character moves. Well, here's what we're going to take a look at. I'll come over and select the Bone Manipulation Tool, Keyboard Shortcut Z, and grab this forearm bone. And as we flex, we can see, almost as we expected, we get these kind of somewhat disturbing types of deformations along the arm. Well, we're going to fix that with Smart Bones. I'm going to undo that and make that level here. But Smart Bones has a process you need to go to, and I want to be very clear on that as we get into it. And there's also an added benefit of working with Smart Bones, and I wish more programs had the ability to do what anime is going to do here. When we actually flex the arm, you'll notice that I've got a gradient in it if I select the arm layer itself and switch tools. We've got this gradient, so it's dark near the edge and lighter towards the center. I'm going to come back and select my bone layer and Z. When I flex this and release, the gradient bends along with the shape, and that's just such a fantastic way to not have to reanimate or do some more detailed types of shape creation when you're working. Let's move on with the smart bones right here. First thing I'll do is rename my layer so I can keep it organized. Now, we only have a single arm here, but for due process and diligence, it's always wise to name the layers. In this case, I'm going to name it arm left. And this is a character as you look at it. Really important to keep that straight, especially if you're working with some other folks. Now, on the layer two, I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that also and rename this left arm bone. Of course, we don't have to do this, but keeping things organized just makes it easier as you start working with more complex characters. Now, I'll come back to the bone selection tool, keyboard shortcut B, and as we click on these bones, we'll notice that up here at the very top area of the frame, one's listed as B1, and if I click on the next one, it's listed as B2. Now, the program will automatically name bones as you work, and that's a great time saver, but it's kind of meaningless when you get into more complex rigs that have multiple bones. But we need to pay attention to something right here, and that is that the actions that we're going to create for smart bones have to match the name of the bone exactly. So this bone right here, I'm going to come up here and click in this area and simply say arm left lower and accept that. And the next bone. I'll highlight that and go arm, left, upper. You can name them whatever you want. There's no magical routine for this. Really, it's whatever makes sense to you. I'll select the arm bone lower here and we'll open our actions palette. With that open right now, we are going to go ahead and create a smart bone. And what I'll do with this bone selected right here is come over here to where we just named it and highlight everything and copy that. Command C or Control C, depending on the platform you're on, which prevents me from making typing mistakes when I start creating this action. We come to Smart Bones. The program will actually automatically sort these, but I always like to just make sure and open up the tab. I'll click the New Action. We have the ability to name this action. The action name means to match the bone name, so I'm going to go ahead and just paste that in there. So Arm, Left, Lower, and go OK. The bone highlights, and we'll notice the time marker has advanced to keyframe or frame area one, and this is how it remembers the actions. It has to move into the timeline to separate it from where you actually create the shapes at timeline zero. So I'll select my bone manipulation tool, and we're going to bend up this arm to what would be about a maximum flux as we work with the character. Now I'm going to select the vector layer below that now to change and modify the shape. So arm left. I'll press T for the Translate tool, and I can grab some of these little points along here if I can highlight those. We'll give this a little bit of a bicep flex. I'll move that out just a little bit. The arm right here, the elbow, needs to be a little more pointed than what we see there, so I'll press the keyboard shortcut C for the Curve tool. Click and drag to the left to tighten that up just a little bit. T Translate again. I want the bicep to move a little more between the elbow and where the shoulder region would be. And look, the gradient is folding up and giving us almost a nice kind of fake view of where the arm would overlap. If I double click on the main timeline now, this will come back. And if we move the arm, it will automatically flex. Let me go ahead and select Z for our manipulation tool. 
Well, let's select the bone layer first. Z for manipulate. And we see a nice flex there. But what if we want to go the other way with the arm? Well, we'll need to create a second action. Let me back out just a little bit. And here's another important naming or nomenclature feature of working with this. I'm going to come back to Smart Bones. This is selected. The lower arm bone is also selected. Smart Bones, I'll choose a new action. If we want the arm to go another way, and we want the program to recognize that, what we have to do is, in this case, I'll paste in the name of that bone, but it has to be followed by a space, and then the number 2, which lets the program know that there's an iteration. I'll select OK. Z selected now in the bone layer. I can flex this down. Select the shape layer. T for translate. We can make some of those same type of changes that we had done in the upper without the bicep flexing. I'll double click the main timeline here. Now we have an arm lower. And when I select Z with the arm bone layer selected and move our character's arm now, we get a nice flex both up and down without those strange deformations. So that's how easy it is to work with and create those custom smart bone flexing actions with Anime Studio Pro.